as you saw blood trip inside the ECMO circuit is too long and too many parts are present uh, and all are foreign surfaces so blood is uh, uh, sub subjected to uh, clotting so uh, what is done that uh, all circuit inside from inside are uh, uh, covered by uh, biolin which is albumin heparin coating and another factor that we are controlling that heparin infusion bolus and infusion we are giving uh, from outside and uh, put under control to control uh, the clotting inside uh, uh, the circuit heparin uh, as i told will give bolus like uh, uh, 50 to 100 unit per kg uh, except if patient shifted from bypass if patient already received uh, uh, bolus during uh, open cardiac surgery and the infusion in the unit 10 to, to 50 unit per kg per hour mostly will start at 20 unit per kg per hour uh, and uh, uh, we will follow uh, and monitor uh, this heparin by ACT, BTT uh, and the XCA like this but uh, it was found that no correlation between these uh, factors so either you use ACT or ABTT or NTXA but mostly ACT is used because it is a bit side uh, machine like this uh, small machine is a bit side just you put a drop of blood and you uh, follow it will take uh, two to three minutes to uh, show the result uh, and we target ACT of about 180 to 220 and uh, uh, as I told, it is uh, a point of care ACT by this small machine. If ACT uh, is increasing more than 220, this means that either we give a high ultra. Here is a good point for your attention. Always, when we, whenever you use heparin uh, uh, as heparinization of patients with uh, uh, a blood clot like TVT or venous clotting, we are using ABTT for monitoring heparin and also in ICU. But in case we are using uh, ECMO machine or dialysis machine, we are using ACT, not ABTT. Why is this? If you see here in this curve, uh, increasing heparin concentration and increasing heparin dose is increasing ABTT value. So you are increasing, increasing, increasing. You will get 80, 100, 120. After 120, you will get flat line. So whenever, whatever you are increasing, the dose of heparin, all you will get in the lab more than 120 seconds no definite number will be given to you after 120 but in ECMO and the dialysis machine well, we are needing higher heparin concentration to avoid clotting so you will find here this is a curve of ACT you see increasing heparin concentration will have a linear relationship to uh, ABT and the clotting time. So you see here, ACT have a linear uh, relation, but ABTT will be flat later on. So increases the heparin concentration will be seen by ACT, not by ABTT, which will be give you a fixed number more than 120 seconds. But in the other hand, ACT will give you uh, a linear relationship and will give you higher numbers so again ABTT usually becomes prolonged more than 2 minutes or 120 seconds beyond the measurable levels at heparin concentration more than 1 unit per ml so ABTT is unsuitable for monitoring heparin dosage for ECMO and the bypass surgery and also as I told for dialysis machines as patients require more than 1 unit per ml however we also monitor 
besides ACT in some cases. In ACT, at higher doses of heparin, the dose uh, response relationship, as we know, as, as we see in the curve, remain linear uh, for ACT. The ACT has a linear response to heparin concentration in the range of up to 5 units per ml, as you see here. Here is also a good point for intensivists. Sometimes you are going up with heparin to a maximum dose and you are not getting good ACT. And you are afraid about the, blood, the clot uh, to be formed in the circuit. As you see here, intrinsic pathway and extrinsic pathway will end to activated factor 10, which uh, uh, activate prothrombin to thrombin and the, uh, it will activate fibrin to fibrin and then the clot will be formed. To prevent the clot in the circuit, we should have heparin. What, whenever, whatever you are increasing heparin for uh, increase the dose, increase the dose without AT or antithrombin or AT3, uh, for your knowledge, both are the same. AT3 is the old name and the AT antithrombin is the new name. So they are uh, the same. So when you read AT3, it equals AT. So without AT, whatever dose you are giving uh, for you are giving from uh, heparin uh, no effect uh, on antithrombus will be uh, happen will be happening so uh, to have a good effect of unfractionated heparin you need AT to be present in a good amount so heparin will combine with AT and will block factor 10 and the prothrombin so the clot will not be formed so if we are, you have uh, insulin resistance, you need, uh, there's many causes, but uh, the most essential and the common thing of it is antithrombin uh, deficiency. So you need to give it either through antithrombin concentrate or through uh, uh, FFB, but you need a, a higher volume uh, to uh, achieve a good response. So if the patient is needing too much dose of heparin, uh, and in spite of giving this much dose of heparin, ACT is not going up and it is uh, always in the lower side. This means is either uh, heparin is eliminated by ECMO circuit or RRT circuit if patient is also connected to CRRT circuit, uh, continuous renal replacement therapy, or there is increased requirement by bilateral transfusion, increased urine output, all this will make uh, heparin dose uh, less. And uh, also maybe other thing which is 80 and the thrombin level or activity is less than 30 to 50 percent. Um, this needs uh, to replace uh, uh, antithrombin uh, concentrate uh, giving uh, 50 units per kg or FFB which is only 1 unit per ml so we'll need frequent and continuous doses of FFB which is uh, giving a volume overload to the patient which is also hazardous maybe so concentrate if available it will be the best and uh, for your uh, uh, attention that if you give AT uh, replacement you should at the same time decrease and go down uh, by uh, heparin infusion uh, to at least 25 percent of the current do uh, dose if you are giving like you reached about 50 units per kg per hour you should go down to 30 units per kg per, per hour to avoid excessive uh, 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 anticoagulation